In this video, I will be oiling the Sears Kenmore 158-1340 convertible sewing machine. Welcome back to the channel. This is one of the four sewing machines in the 158 sewing machine haul that I made. This is the 158-1340. I removed the top cover uh, open the side door here and remove the bottom cover. All it takes is a flat and a Phillips screwdriver. And I just, and the machine is unplugged just for safety. I take the light bulb out um, just to get it out of the way when I'm oiling so I don't get oil on it. And I'm just going to show you quickly some points you should oil. I might miss one or two, but generally it's easy to figure out. You turn the hand wheel and where parts are moving like this against one another. Just put some oil in there. There's a hole right here on this shaft that you're going to want to oil. And because uh, I'm going to oil the whole machine and I'm taking parts off, I take compressed air and blow all the lint out of the machine. If you're not going to take all the covers off, I wouldn't recommend that because you'll just blow the lint uh, and dirt deeper into the machine where you don't want it. So basically important areas are this shaft right here that's rotated on this fork. This shaft, actually you can see an oiling spot there. There's one right here where the shaft goes into the casting. I always hit this one here. This is just like a locking collar to keep the shaft in the right position. And then here you can see the cam stack moving here. This is a plastic part. It's never concerned me because all it's doing is moving the needle position sideways. That's the purpose of this cam. Um, it's not part of the main drive shaft that you see in here that's actually punching through the, the fabric that you're sewing. It's just moving this little arm here back and forth. You can see there's some grease on there. If yours doesn't look like this, put a little bit of grease on that. And okay, I'll move you around to the over on the side where the needle is. Here we are on the side of the machine. I've got the exposure on the camera as high as I can get it to go, hopefully to see inside. But here again, the same thing is just turn the hand wheel and you're going to see where these moving parts are. This part here is the needle bar. You want to make sure that you get oil on that. Right here, up here, you're going to see a spring on a shaft with a, it actually has a hole right here oil oil that if you follow the shaft down like this all the way to the casting here you're gonna see it goes into this little horseshoe shaped or u-shaped piece here make sure you oil that because when the machine is on zigzag that's going to go back and forth and another thing you might miss that's required for the zigzag is right behind this screw there's a shaft that goes into this piece. Make sure you oil that. That's moving in and out like this during the zigzag motion. And then basically just turn the hand wheel and wherever you see, you know, little joints that come together that need a little bit of lubrication. And the needle bar, of course you want that oiled up good. And that's about it on this side of the machine. Now I'll show you the bottom. Here we are looking at the bottom of the Kenmore sewing machine. And you can actually see right here on this shaft, they have a oil hole right here. So we'll do that. This joint, you're going to see where this arm comes onto a pin in the casting. That's a pivot point that needs a little oil. There's another one over on the left hand side, right here. And then again, just reach up, 
the machine's unplugged and turn the hand wheel and wherever you see connecting levers they go from the top to the bottom that have a pivot point put a drop of oil on there make sure they look clean you're going to see a little cam right in here that rubs on a piece of metal put a little drop of oil on there so it's pretty simple if you have a little time if you're not comfortable with mechanical things just take it in to your local sewing machine center and they'll do all this for you um, and I'm going to show you one more thing that most people probably won't do you're going to want to be careful with this one um, I'll show you what it is let me reposition All right, this one you want to be careful with. You want to make sure you use sewing machine oil. One drop, absolutely not more than one drop. And the shaft that runs through the motor, there is a felt pad right here. Take a flashlight, look in there, you'll see a felt pad. One drop of oil, no more than that. And do it on both sides of the motor right here. And you, this, I'm out at camera shot, but come right around this side of the motor, you're going to see the same ventilation holes. Take your flashlight, look in there, you'll see a felt pad, one drop of oil. That's just keeping the shaft of the motor lubricated. You don't want to over oil that. It'll just attract dust and dirt. And Let's take a look at one more thing. What we're looking at now is the hook on the sewing machine. The hook area where your bobbin goes make sure you put after you've cleaned all these parts right here take all this out and clean all the lint out put one drop of oil right on this metal area here that's where the hook is going to be traveling back and forth okay and then one more thing i'm going to show you oh there is a wheel right here you can oil if you take a flashlight when you're doing this and kind of move the hand wheel, you're going to see all the little spots that are moving that you need to oil. Even if you miss one, it's not the end of the world. If you get 90% of these, it's going to really help the machine out. The last place to, to oil the machine that most people might forget about is your bobbin winder. Um, you want to look down in here. This is where you wind your bobbin. And get down in there right where that little groove is and put one drop of oil in there because the wheel down below is spinning on that shaft and a little oil just makes that spin a lot easier all right I think that's going to be the end of the, this video showing how to oil the machine um, I won't be doing an oiling video on every single Kenmore 158 because they all are basically the same. If you're comfortable taking the cover pieces off, cleaning it, oiling it, and putting it back together, go ahead. Otherwise, take it in and let somebody else do it. And, yeah, as usual, subscribe, like the video, and uh, thanks for watching.